Well, hello, welcome, welcome back to Roadworthy. This is Sarah. I just realized my microphone is pointing totally the wrong way. And yes, I got a haircut. And it's been cloudy all morning, and the sun has <laughs> just come out. Gosh, gosh darn it, and I'm not prepared for sun. Moving on. So, hiking adventures continue, and that really does impact my reading. Um, you know, we usually go camping in the van. And yes, I don't have to set up a tent or anything like that, but you know, you still have to like either get a fire going to cook dinner or you got to bust out the stove, get out the propane, you know, like, like everything just takes so much longer. Um, so I find that I actually don't have a ton of time reading, um, but that's okay. You know, it's summer, it's beautiful here in the Pacific Northwest. The sun is setting at like 9.30 at night. It's fantastic. I'm not complaining. Um, definitely had some hiking adventures. I will insert some pictures. I have never seen wild rhododendrons in bloom. <laughs> so I'll stick in uh, a picture that my husband took of me goofy. I, anyway, the picture's not great. So let's just focus on the pink blooms um, that were white on the trail. It was amazing. Um, and actually at the end of that hike, this was out on the Olympic Peninsula, um, we decided to go to the Hama Hama Seafood Company for oysters uh, after our hike. Um, so if you're a raw oyster person, you're probably familiar with Washington oysters. Um, so the, the Hama Hama is a, is a, you know, a well-regarded uh, variety of Washington oyster. And obviously the Hama Hama Seafood Company is where they come from. Uh, so it's pretty cool. You could go there and you can see the oyster beds out there and their location is right um, where the Hama Hama River uh, meets up with, with Hood Canal. So, uh, you know, it was a great location and delicious oysters. And I have to say, a post-hiking snack of raw oysters is pretty dang good. <laughs> <laughs> um, mom, I can hear you complaining about the texture, but oh, really good. So we do have some hiking adventures coming up. Uh, going to be headed to hopefully Mount Rainier coming up. So Mount Rainier is one of the three national parks here in Washington State. And I just read a statistic from the Park Service that Mount Rainier has experienced a 40% increase in visitors over the last 10 years. Um, and this is a theme that the Park Service has kind of been echoing now for a while, is that, um, especially since the pandemic, visitorship at the national parks has really, really increased. And people were expecting it to drop back down after the pandemic ended. And that's not really what happened, is, is visitorship has continued to remain high. Um, some of the old timers complain, you know, that there's too many people, they're filling up the parking lots, and then they only explore, you know, the visitor center and maybe 100 yards away from the visitor center. Um, so there's those complainers. Um, I kind of say, who cares, you know? Um, I think it's fantastic that more and more people are discovering the national park system and exploring it and enjoying it. I think that's fantastic. Um, so, so anyway, the national parks have been struggling with how to manage um, the crowds yet 
fulfill their their mission of of making these areas accessible to the public. Um, so how how to balance those those needs and and obviously protect those areas. So. Um, Mount Rainier this year has initiated a reservation system to get in. Uh, so there's four sort of main entrances to the park and the, the most popular ones, the north and the south entrance, um, have reservation systems. And the south entrance, I'm guessing, is sort of the direct route from folks from Portland area going to the the Paradise entrance. Um, that one has had the reservation system in place since uh, Memorial Day. And Sunrise, which is the north entrance, and I'm assuming is the most direct entrance for Seattleites, <laughs> um, they're initiating their reservation system for entry uh, July 4th. So I think we're going to try and sneak in to the sunrise side um, just before the 4th. Maybe go for a hike out of sunrise on the 3rd. Um, this is obviously to alleviate the, the sometimes hours-long backup to get into the park. Um, so again, it's sort of forcing people to spread out uh, what, what time they enter the park and hopefully alleviate the crowds at the parking lots, et cetera, et cetera. If it meets the needs of enhancing visitor experience and managing the, the onslaught of visitors, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's necessary. Um, the Park Service will frequently complain that their funding keeps getting cut, keeps getting cut, yet their visitorship is increasing. So uh, wanting to do improvements to, to facilities to help support that growth, yet reduced funding. So, you know, having enough rangers, education programs, updating facilities in visitor centers, parking lots, roads, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's hard to do that uh, with decreased funding and more and more people. So anyway, interesting, interesting times for the Park Service, I'm sure. Uh, that's enough rambling about the Park Service. Really rambling. Um, I read one book this week, The Enchanted April by Elizabeth Van Arno. This was published in 1922, and they'll tell you on the back of the book that it was a Book of the Month Club selection. Um, it's interesting that today Goodreads classifies it as literary fiction. Um, but knowing it was the Book of the Month Club selection, to me, it makes more sense that as I was reading it, I was thinking, I think today this would probably be characterized as women's fiction. Um, so this is about four women who don't really know each other um, and decide to sort of pool their, their resources and rent a castle in Italy for the month of April. Uh, so two of the women um, are sort of unhappily married and are going to Italy. Uh, there's the 28-year-old um, socialite who is not married um, who is going to sort of escape the expectations that are sort of on her as a society gal. Um, and she's extremely beautiful. Um, and she finds that quite onerous. <laughs> um, and then the fourth woman is this widower. Um, and so the four of them go to Italy in the springtime. And as you see the gardens blooming, you know, their friendships bloom. 
and and they all individually bloom and grow. Um, so that's a little bit why I would call this women's fiction more than literary fiction. And to me, that was probably the least interesting aspect of the book. Um, what this book does do really well is a lot of the, the uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of comedy of manners. Um, so a lot of making fun of British, <laughs> British overseas, um, class, um, so, uh, you know, and what's, what's proper, you know, British upper class behavior. So there's a wonderful scene where Lottie, uh, one of the middle-aged, unhappily married women is decided, she just decided to invite her husband to come. Um, and so there's this discussion about where he's going to sleep. Does he go in the spare bedroom? Uh, does he share Lottie's room? Um, and they're having this conversation at the dinner table. And Mrs. Fisher, our elderly widower, is like, oh, my God, you know, this is inappropriate conversation. Like, you don't discuss sleeping arrangements. My good Lord, you don't discuss husbands. And, you know, you certainly not at the dinner table. Um, so, so lots of comedic moments in this book, of snappy dialogue, wittiness. Um, and that's really, to me, the strength of this book. Um, I, you know, I thought it was okay. Um, you know, it, honestly, if it was any longer, I, I probably would have been like, all right, let me jump to the end, frankly. Um, and kind of what I walked away from this book was thinking Elizabeth von Arnhem was probably a lot of fun to have dinner with. <laughs> it's kind of... And, and she wrote many books, and this is her most famous. And I feel like, okay, if this is your most famous, well-regarded, I don't think I need to read any more of your books. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've had this on my TBR for a long, long time. So I'm glad that I finally, like, did it. And, um, and I was reading that well mostly while we were camping so it was kind of the perfect thing um you know in between watching the fire you know you know doing all the camping things um what do i got going on i'm still listening to or still have a uh, buddy read with lindy and maya of the diviners by margaret lawrence uh, I am listening to How to Say Babylon by Safia Sinclair. Uh, that is her memoir. And um, I just started Disoriental. I don't have the book with me, and now I'm blanking on the author. Ah! Um, she is... Uh, Persian extraction of living in France. Um, so it is translated from the French. I will have the details together when I wrap that book up. <laughs> all right, that is all I've kind of got going on right now. Um, so, you know, more hiking and um, Hopefully some beautiful views of Mount Rainier coming your way. And I kind of think that might be it. See ya.